Hey and welcome back to another video. So in today's video we're actually going to look at a new feature in Swift UI 3.0 and that's available in Xcode 13. We're going to go look at how we can add a search bar to our Swift UI views using the search bar modifier. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a list of people and we're going to search through them and then in our second example we're actually going to build a screen that allows to search for um, items in a menu and view some promotions. It's also worth noting as well that this startup project is actually available on GitHub. So I'll leave the link for that below. So if you want to follow along. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, cool. So before I get started, I just want to quickly just go over the architecture. So we just got a view model that if we go into it, it has a set data of an array of people. And we also have an array here, filter data, which is what we're going to use to hold the values that we get from searching through our array. So what we're going to do is we're going to now look at how we can use the searchable modifier to actually add a search bar to this view and allow us to actually search and view some of the results that we get back from our search bar. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to add a function into our view model, which allows us to actually, like I said before, search and filter through this um, array of data. So let's do that now. So we just look at the implementation of this function. We've just called it search with query so the query is the value that we're going to use from the search bar which we'll get into in a second and what we want to do inside of this function here is we want to update our published array depending on if the array contains our query so what i'm going to do is i'm going to write a high order function with a ternary operator and then i'll go through it all right cool so what we're saying here is that if our query is empty, so if it's an empty string, then we just want to present everything that's in this array. But if it's not empty, we're going to use a filter function um, in Swift to look for any of these names that contain the query that we're entering in. So the next thing we need to do now is actually start to hook this up to our search bar in our Swift um, view. So in order to do that, the first thing we need to do is actually add our search bar to the screen. So how do you do this? Well, it's actually quite simple. So we have a modifier in Swift um, called searchable, which is new in that's called 13. And what you have to do is give it some kind of state um, string property so you can actually bind the value that someone's typing in the text field to your state variable. So let's type it out. So what this is doing here with this searchable modifier is that we're saying that whenever someone types in a value in this text field like this, we want to put this inside of our query. So the value is actually bound to our state variable. So whatever we type in this text field gets set inside of our state property. Now, what about if in this search bar, I want to actually override the text inside of here and set my own text. Well, Searchable has another parameter that you can use called prompt, which allows us to do this. So I'm going to add that in now. And as you can see, it doesn't say search anymore. It now says find the person, which is what we set up as our prompt. All right, cool. The next thing that we need to do is actually check to see when someone is typing inside of here, actually update our list so we can actually see the people. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a modifier called onChange. So what onChange will allow us to do is actually observe when the search has changed and then in turn, we're going to update our list. So let's do that now. So as you can see here, we've got the modifier onChange and we're observing the changes to our query state um, variable. So whenever the value inside of this variable changes, we're going to get a new query term that someone's typed in. And in turn, we're going to use our view model search function to search for someone that matches that query. So you may be wondering, why am I not using a dollar sign here? And the reason why that is, is because we're not actually binding the value um, of this variable to this modifier. So all this modifier is doing is just listening to the changes within the state property here. So what we're going to do now is actually test it out. So if I type out B, you can see that the people with B pop up. And if I type out um, W, people with the W show up. But we've actually got an issue here. So when you load up the app for the first time, you'll realize that the list is actually empty. And the reason why that is is because we've not actually triggered our search when the view appears. 
So what we're going to do is we're actually going to check for when the list appears to just call our search with nothing. So in our search, let's just change this. So we'll give it a default value of an empty string. So we don't need to set that ourselves. And then inside of our view on our list, on the on appear, with a call. Like so. So now when your app launches for the first time, you'll notice that you get a list of all the people and you can actually start typing out the names for these people that match the um, search term like so. Okay, sweet. So what about in the event that if we keep on typing like this, it doesn't match any of the um, terms? Well, what we can do is we can actually add in a overlay. So a view that tells us that, hey, we've not found the query that you're looking for. So let's do that now. So what I'm gonna do is in our views folder, I'm going to create a new view called empty view. So switch to our view. All right, cool. And inside of this empty view, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna bind the query from our content view to this view and display some text that says, hey, we couldn't find the results you were looking for for this term, blah, blah, blah. So let's do that now. So as you can see, um, we just got an empty view. We've added a binding for our query because we want to bind the state property from our content view into this view. So whenever a change happens within there, we want it to update in here. And we just got a text object that displays the query term that we're going to bind. And in our previews, we need to make sure that we set a constant with the text here, like so. All right, cool. So the next thing we need to do is actually use this empty view within our content view. So in our content view, let's just add an overlay. And we'll say that if the filter data array is empty, then we're going to show this empty view that we just created. So as you can see, we've done that now. So let's actually test it out and see what happens. So if I just go into the text field and just type in some nonsense, you can see here that it's updating and saying we couldn't find, I'm going to pronounce that, but can't, we can't find that. We can search for modifier as well. Alternatively, if we didn't want to show an empty view that just says, hey, we couldn't find this. And instead, when someone actually taps on this and there's nothing there, we want to offer some kind of suggestions, we can actually do that. So what we're going to do now is the overlay we just added, let's just comment that out. And on the searchable modifier, so on the searchable modifier, it actually has a content clause. So on the searchable modifier, you can actually use the view builder that allows you to make suggestions. So in order to do that, what we need to do is define some curly braces like so. And what it in here, what we're going to say is that if the uh, filtered data is empty, then we're going to offer the user some suggestions. So let's do that now. So as you can see, what we've said here is that if the filter data is empty, we're just gonna get a random element from our array of data. And then we're going to say, maybe you're looking for this person with a random name, but you'll also notice that I've added this modifier as well. So what is the purpose of this? Well, if we don't add this modifier, what will happen is when you tap on the suggestion, it won't do anything. So what this does is it actually triggers the search for the term that you passed in. So the term that we passed in here is the person's name. So whenever you tap on this suggestion, it will actually trigger the search functionality to search for this random name. So let's do that now. So if I just click on here and just type in some random stuff, once I click on the suggestion, you can see that it triggers the search completion and it'll actually look for Donna, I almost said that wrong, Johanna Castillo. So that's the way that this works. So if you want to actually trigger some kind of action where your query gets the new search completion, then you need to use this modifier here. So we've done a lot of stuff here where we've just been searching as you've been typing in. But what about if you don't want to actually listen for each individual keystroke, what about if you want to do it where you need someone to type in the whole term and then hit search on an actual keyboard? 
Well, it's actually easy to do this. There's actually a modifier that we can use to check for when people actually hit search on a search bar. So let's look into this one now. So what we're going to do is on our on change, we're just going to comment that out also. And we're going to use the on submit of the search to check for when someone's actually searched within the search bar. So let's do that now. So notice here how we're saying on submit of search. So when the search is submitted and also as well, we're using the query directly that's bound to our searchable modifier. So in order to see this, you can't actually do this in the um, Xcode previews. So you have to run this on the simulator. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this on the simulator to show you this in action. So on our keyboard, what we're going to do is make sure that on the input output, so we're going to make sure that this is not um, ticked and you should see the keyboard appear. If you don't, then you might have to click it and then click it again. So toggle it on and off again so you don't, um, so you can get the keyboard. And what I'm going to do now is actually just search for a term. So I'll just go search for Billy. And as you can see, as I'm typing, the screen isn't actually updating because we took out that on change. But if I hit search on the keyboard, you can see now that it actually triggers our view search function with our query so we get our updates within our so list. So just before we finish off and then move on to our next example, I just want to show you how it's possible to actually keep the navigation bar always on the screen. So in between your text and your prompt, if you actually just hit enter and then if you just type out, what you're able to do here is actually specify the placement. And what we're saying here is we actually want the placement of it to be in a navigation bar draw and to display always so now you'll notice that our search bar is always visible on the screen when you run it for the first time. So you don't need to pull down to make it visible. And when you're scrolling, you can see that it's always in the navigation bar as well. Everything that the searchable modifier um, offers and also some other modifiers that we can use with the search capabilities. What I want to do now in the next example is look at how we can use some environment variables that we've got available to us to check for when someone is searching and also if we want to dismiss a search bar as well. So let's look into that now. So as you can see here, we've got our second example where we have a menu of food items. So what's the problem that we're actually trying to solve here? So if you look at the root of our app, you'll notice that we actually have our view model being injected into our content view via the environment. And we have a query. So this is where we're going to attach our searchable modifier onto our content view. So it's actually at the root of our view. So I guess the problem that we're trying to solve here is that how can I, um, you know, check for so what someone is searching for, or if someone is searching um, within the child views, and also as well, how can I handle and control dismissing the search within the child views as well? Well, if we actually look at the Apple documentation, you'll notice that we have an environment value here called is searching. So what is searching allows us to do is it actually allows us to check within our child views, which are a descendant of their parent views that have the search for modifier applied onto them if you are searching. So as you can see here in this example, in our content view, we've added the searchable modifier to our reading view. But within our reading view here, this is where we check directly if someone is searching or if someone is not searching. So what we're going to do in our case is within our content view, we're going to check to see if someone is searching. And if someone is searching, then we're going to manipulate the view just a bit. So let's go into our content view. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually add in the environment value for is searching. So let's do that now. So now we've got our is searching modifier within the view where the searchable modifier is attached to. And what we want to do inside of here is check to see if the user is searching and there's no data available um, from the filter that they search for, then we want to show the profile view. So now that we've done this overlay, um, there's actually two more things we need to do now to get this to work. So the first thing we need to do is that we need to check to see um, on change of our query to actually call our search function. So let's do that now. 
So what will happen here now is that when we actually bind our and use our search bar modifier, similar to the example in the first part of this video, um, it will actually update our screen. And then finally, what we need to do is we need to attach the actual search bar to our content view. So on the content view in the search bar app, let's just use the searchable and then we're going to say query like so. Okay, so in order to actually test this out, we're going to run this on the simulator and not use the Xcode previews. And the reason why um, I don't want to use the Xcode previews, even though I could, is because it's easy to forget adding, setting all this up within the actual um, previews here. So just to make life easier, I'm just going to run it on the simulator. So now if we go inside of here and just start typing, so I just search for B, you'll see all the meals with B pop up. If I keep on going and start typing in some gibberish, you can see here that we just get um, that we check out our latest promotion. So we actually check to see in our overlay if someone is searching and the filter date is empty. We want to show this. But you'll see in our promo view, we actually have an action here to clear the search bar. So if I hit this now, nothing actually happens. So what we want to do is whenever someone actually hits clear search, we want to actually reset the current state um, of our screen so it shows all the menu items. So let's look at how we can do that now. So the first thing we need to do is we need to do a bit of refactoring here. So what we need to do first is we need to actually pass the query that someone's typed in into our promotions view. So let's do that now. So you may be wondering why am I passing the query into the promos view? Like what, what's its what's its purpose here? But if you remember and you actually look at the chain of where this query is, so it's actually at the root of our app here where it's bound to our searchable modifier. And also as well, within our content view, we're actually checking for on change of our query. So whenever we change the value of our query, this is going to get updated within the um, app and actually show the new query term that you're looking for. So the next thing we need to do now is within our promos view, we need to actually inject our query into this view as well. So let's just add that in now. So we said that we wanted to actually check to see when someone actually hits um, the clear search. We want to dismiss the search bar and reset the screen. Well, similarly to is searching, there's actually another environment value that you can use called a dismiss search. So let's look at the Apple documentation and see what capability that this offers. So we look at the documentation here for dismiss search. Its description tells us that it asks the system to dismiss the current search interaction. So what we need to do is if you just go down here, you see here that we have the environment value dismiss search and we actually call the action um, function to actually trigger the closure. So all we need to do is actually use this within our view, so promos view and the button, and then we want to reset the value with any query. So let's do that now. All right, cool. So let's go inside of our promos view and we'll just add that in. Okay, cool. So as you can see here, in our button, we're calling the dismiss search action. So to Close the search, as I said, and we're calling a function which is private that we declared here called handle reset. So this will reset the screen whenever someone hits clear um, searches. Okay, cool. So now let's run this and see what happens. So now if I just type in some nonsense, and if I hit clear search, you'll see that it resets our screen. So now we have a fully working app where you can search. It will filter out the results from an array of data. And also as well, we check to see the current state as to whether someone is searched or not, as well as giving you the functionality to actually close the search bar yourself within Swift UI. So we've actually covered a lot of things that's available with the search new search capabilities in uh, Swift UI 3.0 and iOS 15 and Xbox 13. So that's everything from me today. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate any feedback in the um, comment sections below. Also as well, I'd really appreciate if you give the video a thumbs up. Um, I really appreciate that a lot. And if you haven't already, hit the notification bell on the channel and subscribe as well so you can get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.